What is stabilization? Is stability an illusion? Is there something that we can control? These are the questions that have nothing to do with what we're going to do today. Now, if you're like me, and you either cannot afford Final Cut Pro X, or your little laptop simply can't handle After Effects, we have to get a little creative, a little innovative. So I'm going to show you how to do a stabilization lock-on-esque effect in Premiere Pro. Let's do this. Uh, that's not a real orange. And the wrap is still on. So like I said, this will be some improvised, guerrilla-style um, editing. So I'm going to show you two ways to do this. One is you get a, uh, a rectangle layer and you stretch it out to right to left and then you make a, another one that goes up and down. Then once you've done that, uh, you, go, you go over to here to the little plus sign and you, go, and you click on the save margins and you drag it down. Now, now, as you can see, I have already done that and I've selected it, so I've got this little save margins area around here. So as you can see here, I've gotten the rectangle layers at a crosshairs over the, over the horizontal and vertical, these little notches in the save margins. Where they cross is at the center of the screen or as close as, uh, or as, close as we can get at the moment. So we select that and we drag it over all the parts that we're going to use. And then the next one I'm going to show you uh, is we go down here and we go click on color mat. We go through all this palaver. Yes, let's make it red again. Uh, yep, color mat, that's fine. And we drag that over to here and we put it over the entirety of the clip we're going to use. So now I'm going to uh, get a ellipsis mask and I'm going to put it around my face. Next part, uh, we drag it down so we can see inside the circle. So that, there we go, at about 25, 26%, that's the part, that's where you wanna aim for. So back to our first one. So the, fir so the, so the first part I'm going to do is I'm going to put the crosshairs over the little, uh, over my chocolate orange. Now for that, we're gonna have to zoom in a lot. That's important, we put in keyframes, as always, <clears throat> on the position and scale. And then we move forward a couple of frames. As you can see, it goes up. So what I need to do is I need to make more keyframes and readjust. Then same thing, forward a couple of frames. And it's at, it's at the very top of my throw. And we, re and we readjust again. So the best way to do this, or the way that I found best to do this, is to go forward a couple of frames each time to where there's a different movement and then readjust it to where, to where it's in the crosshairs until you've done it all the way through. And then you look at it and you see the parts where it goes off and you fix it. And you do that until you're happy with what you have. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. And I'm going to do this for this uh, for this fir for this first clip and then for this second clip, but for this one, I'm going to have it on my head. So this is going to take a while. So I'm going to so I'm going to time lapse through, and then I will see you at the end. So let's take a, let's take a look at this first part. Yep, I'm very happy with that. That's all fine. So then the next part is doing it on my face. And that's what I'm going to do, so I will see you in a little bit. So that is a very rough estimation of what you can do. I've got, uh, I've done one or two passes of both at the moment, and I'm fairly happy with the results so far. Uh, I might go in and do a little bit more finagling later on, but that is the basics of what it is. So now let's take a look at the second method I'm going to show you, which, as I said, you put a circle around your face. Uh, you pick a position on the screen where you want your face to stay and then you effectively uh, move uh, move the video clip around to keep your face within that little oval circle thing. So I'm going to do that and again, more time lapses. Hooray, my favorite thing. And then I will show you the results. Now again, like the like the crosshairs technique, you have to be you have to have a lot of room around your subject, around the part that you're going to kind of focus on, so you don't get any black bars 
uh, coming in from any of the sides. Now one way to work around this is by putting in your own black bars, like your cinematic black bars, and then that can help you uh, have more room to move and have and, and have a bit more freedom with what with the amount that you are going to focus and animate. But for now, I'm going to show you how to do it with no cinematic black bars, and then if you want to use black bars, do it. I, I do recommend you do try it. These techniques can be useful for videos such as sports videos or music videos, and oddly, what I found while I was working on the uh, on this video is that can be is that it can be used to give a static shot, almost almost like a POV sort of feel to it. So that is how you do a stabilization lock on esque effect in Premiere Pro. It's a little bit rough and a little bit gorilla style of editing, but I'm very happy with the results. Um, if you can, I do highly recommend you you get Final Cut Pro X or you get After Effects because they have whole programs that will do this for you that will do this for you automatically. But if like me, like I said, you can't afford it or you can't run it on your computer or your laptop, then this is the, then this is a very effective, if albeit time consuming way to get the exact same effect. So, as always, I hope you've enjoyed the video, I hope it has helped you in any way, shape or form, if it has, like, subscribe, all that usual good YouTube stuff, and I will see you in the next video. So until then, bye!